Unity of Houston is an inclusive church where we seek to understand and live the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. At Unity, we welcome all people from all spiritual paths and every walk of life. We celebrate the diversity of our city and of our world, and we teach love, tolerance, and oneness, seeking to live in harmony with open minds and open hearts. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome at Unity. Join us and discover that the life of your dreams is already within you. So tonight we're completing our Adventures in Faith series with Emily Cady's chapter on spiritual gifts. So maybe you guess why I'm wearing a big red bow on top of my head? <laughs> so hopefully you remember something from this evening besides this amazing um, musical experience that we just had that you are a gift, you are a treasure, and that you are endowed already your divine inheritance within you, this amazing gifts that you've been given that the world is ready to receive. And so we're going to talk about those gifts tonight. So first, did you know you had spiritual gifts? Okay, some of us. Have you thought about what they are particularly? Yeah. So when we were children, perhaps your mom, your parents, a teacher, or a coach, or maybe a caregiver said, I think you have a gift for that. You have some kind of a, a talent. You should take lessons in that. You should take some, some class, do some after-school activities. And some of us, it may have been athletics, or it may have been something mechanical, like putting things together, building. It may have been... Um, Gosh, anything, just cooking or academics, may have been great at school. For me, my thing was performing. <laughs> Big surprise. Big surprise. When I was, God, I think I was just barely talking and walking and I was singing and dancing for my family. And I'm grateful that my mom saw something there. And when I was four, she put me in dance classes. And so that was great. And that was just really just a seed of something that she just saw I had a passion, a desire to do it. I wasn't necessarily great at it right at first, right? So there's something that we all have, and it's not necessarily ministry or performing or something that we would normally even call a talent. We have something that lights us up when we do it. That's our passion, our desire. There's something that we all have to bring. And so we know that that's ours to bring when we're doing it and you can get in the zone and you just feel like, yeah, I could just do this for free. I don't even have to get, I love doing it so much. I could just give it away. And I believe that when Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly, that he was talking about a life that was full of you being free to share all that you are that that's the abundant life, to just really be able to connect and serve the world in a way that's most fulfilling and makes you feel the most alive. And 1 Corinthians 7, 7 says, each has a particular gift from God. So you see how even those of us who have this, blessed to have the opportunity to share our voices here tonight, that we still have different voice types, different gifts, that, but together it creates one harmony, one, one piece of music. So we need all the different expressions of our gift, not just one person in the world who gets to be a great athlete or a great singer or a great um, teacher, or whatever, like all, everyone, you can see, oh, there's that facet of how that gift shows up in that person that we're all just like a diamond all together, shimmering in our gifts and expression of God in our own way. So how do we attain these gifts? Uh, well, we might think, well, we've done all the chapters and lessons and truths, so I worked up to it, and now I'm ready for my gift, right? <laughs> well, the good news is that you don't have to be worthy of the gift. You don't have to earn the gift. Gift's already given. Praise God, the gift's already given. The thing about the gifts, here in the little ring, I don't know if there's anything I can do, but um, 
I can change mics if I need to. Just let me know. Um, the thing about it is that it's a potential, right? Like the dancing, I didn't know the different steps. I knew how to boogie. I danced, I did boogie fever, okay? I was little in the end of the 70s. That was my song when I was two or three. And uh, so I had to learn the steps. I had to learn the technique. It took years and years and years. And then when I was, uh, when I got older, I joined the choir and I, and I learned how to, how to sing with other people and match pitch and things like that. And, but it was just a seed of a desire, right? That had to be grown. So we've got to get in touch with our gifts, and we have to use them in order to grow them, because really, we don't know what, what to do with them until we start expressing them and get to hone them and shape them and see what is, what is our way of expressing them. I love in, the, uh, in Matthew, and Jesus shares the parable of the talents, and the story is such, a, such a, a great one to fit in with this theme of spiritual gifts because this man who owns great property, he has these three servants and he goes off on a trip somewhere, a long trip, and he gives each of the servants according to their ability, it says, these talents. And I used to think that a talent was a coin and then I looked it up and it says that it's a, a unit of measurement of weight of property. So there is some large piece of that property of, that was of value that was given, and it was given in quantities according to their ability. And so one was given five talents, one was given two talents, and one was given one talent. And the servant who was given five talents went out, he invested, he shared, he used his talents in a way that multiplied it and doubled it. The servant who had two talents went out with the two and did what he could to invest and serve and share and multiply it and doubled that. And then there was the servant with the one talent. And you think, ah, he doesn't have much to lose. And he thought, I think he was stuck in this onlyness. He was feeling bad. These other guys, five, two, I only got one. I better protect this. I better protect this. And so he hid, he hid the talent. He put it away. When the master came back, he said, oh, you know, you will." He, he blessed and prospered and was grateful for the servants that, that multiplied his talents. And then the last one, he said, you didn't do anything? All this time you're gone, you did nothing? You didn't even try to use this? Well, now it would be taken from you. And I always thought that was, you know, so sad. But then when I thought of it, and what was interesting about this talent is that the word talent in English, of course, another, another word in Greek, in the language of the scripture, but that uh, in, when it was translated into English in the late 13th century was when the word talent began to mean gift or skill, and it was an interpretation of this passage. I thought that was just really neat etymology of you know, the use of the word that, uh, that it was an interpretation of this passage, the, the talent that we've got to use it to multiply it, or else you really don't, if you're not using it, you really don't have it. It's kind of just there in potential. It's an idea, sounds like something fun we might try. When we make use of our talents, that's when we see them increase and prosper. I found this poem that I thought was neat and I want to share with you called Gift by R.S. Thomas. Some ask the world and are diminished in the receiving of it. You gave me only this small pool that the more I drink from, the more overflows me with sourceless light. So I want to share that again. Some ask the world and are diminished in the receiving of it. You gave me only this small pool that the more I drink from, the more overflows me with sourceless light. So this poem addresses a problem that occurs with our gifts, that when we put them into the world, that the world can diminish our gifts when we seek outside validation from the world. Like, okay, I'm going to try to do this. 
you're trying, you're fledgling, you're just getting started, someone says, you didn't take some classes, or you're way off pitch, or they're just not good at that, and they're like, oh, okay, that's it, that's it. And we don't give ourselves enough of a chance. Or even that we're really, you know, doing our work, we're putting ourselves out there, and we live in this world now of instant feedback. You put your video out there on YouTube, or whatever, you know, social media, and People leave all their comments, and how many times do we hear of celebrities who go into a depression because they, they read the comments of harsh things that people said, and they found their way out of that because they were able to discover their own internal validation, and it's a process that we need to do for ourselves. Kids experience horrible online bullying nowadays, there was a Pew Research Center study last year, and it said that 59% of teens have been bullied or harassed online, and over 90% of teens believe that this is a major problem for teens. It leads to a greater, list, a greater risk of low self-esteem, of depression, of anxiety, of violence, academic difficulties. And we all know how limiting criticism is when we take it in and we own it and we believe it. Even good criticism can be hard to take. Uh, when I was a music major, we had to do juries every term and had to get up and sing very challenging music, classical music. Some of us know before a panel of experts, doctors in music, and they're there to help you and give you good feedback. But it's still hard to get that form back and to find out that this vowel sound was wrong or whatever um, you know, passage may, may have not been good, even though I passed all my juries, and it's still like, you could take that in and you can let it discourage you or you can find the way to encourage yourself in your gifts. What I loved on Sunday, man, I loved everything about Sunday. Who was here for the services on Sunday? It was amazing. If you didn't get to come, it's on video. It's, uh, check it out. You want it, you just want to check it out. And we got to have Ricky Byers, who's like one of this, the top New Thought artists. She writes the music, a lot of the music you hear on Wednesday nights, and she sings. And she was up there with no shoes on. This is someone who is free to share her talents. No shoes. She was just letting go, singing with all her soul, all her body, just moving, sharing her music, sharing her light. And I was like, that's what it that's what it is to just be free in your gift, to really know who you are and just give it away like that. And I was just so inspired by her. She was awesome, awesome. So that, that's what I'm talking about is just uh, that, that she was so centered in spirit and it was coming from within her. That's really when we are giving our gift and sharing it. When we don't care so much about what everybody thinks, but... It's more important what we think, what, what God is inspiring us to do. I wanted to share about something that um, someone said in uh, a group that I'm in that I was just really inspired by this week. And he said that when I get uncomfortable, I want to quit. You know, when you're, when you're working hard at something and it just starts to become a struggle, that you feel like you want to quit, but he recognized that when he feels uncomfortable, that's when he's growing the most. <sighs> and I thought that for myself. I'm like, oh, man. I get into that where I'm like, this is just, mm, it feels uncomfortable, and I don't know, and this, I'm just not 100. I want to know all the steps and exactly how this is going to work out. I'm such a... Um, I'm such a one on the Enneagram. If you know the Enneagram, this is perfectionist type. You know, I want to have it all mapped out, right? And spirit's in the flow, and spirit's like, go, go with it, right? And I feel uncomfortable, can be excited about that, because that might mean the next great leap into my awakening and understanding and expression. So the solution to this problem of fear we get caught in fear, not wanting to share our gift, is to let, to let go 
and to know that your gift is from an overflowing source that cannot be diminished or decreased. So we reach within, we pray, we pray, we put spirit first in our lives, listening for guidance, going to spirit for guidance rather than everybody, every, every critic out there, going to spirit and taking action. And as you use your gifts, they will grow and they will expand and you will become an open channel for the expression of spirit. Um, now I think about, gosh, I've seen so many different people that I can use as examples of how gifts have expanded. My brother went in college, he went to a school vocational program, not in college, in high school, he went to a vocational program to be an auto mechanic. And so he got his first job at Sears and he worked as an auto mechanic. And then he went and worked at JFK Airport, we lived in New York, and he became a mechanic on airplanes, and he learned how to repair engines and do that, that work for TWA. And he did that for years, and then when he, uh, he injured his shoulder, and he wasn't really able to do it without pain, and so he went to college, and he studied labor law, and then he became a business agent for his union that he was in as a mechanic, and became, uh, he represented those people that were like him and were mechanics. And so his gift, this mechanical gift that he had, grew and grew and showed up in different ways. I don't think that the way that our gift shows up when we're in our 20s is going to be the same way it shows up in our 40s, our 60s, or our 80s. It's going to transform and grow because we're here on a trajectory of growth. Ken, you, so, you, so you studied, right? You studied music, opera singer. Then you, you, you did this wonderful music direction. And, and now you're, um, I, I, let's, let's get a mic. I want, Ken, tell us a little bit about. Just tell us briefly about the nonprofit that you work for. Uh, thank you. Um, I currently work for a nonprofit here in Houston that's called Music Doing Good. And uh, we provide music-based outreach programs, including an instrument donation program, which is the program that I run. And to your point about how our gifts um, morph and expand in, in ways that you may not originally expect, um, running an instrument donation program for me is a little bit um, outside of my comfort zone because I'm not trained as an instrumentalist, and I'm in charge of getting instrumental instruments to, in, to young students and to school programs and helping them strategize about how to make these programs stronger. But it was the seed of that was my musical training and my love for music and finding ways to help um, other people have those experiences so that they can grow. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's true for all of us, that there's this seed, and it grows, and it transforms, and it morphs. All of the ministers have had different jobs before we became ministers, and Karen worked in the medical field, Michael was a piano bar singer, and Mindy did everything, I think, before <laughs> she became a minister. <laughs> a beekeeper, a ballerina, I, the list is amazing. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> she still does everything. Emily Cady says, do not fear or get nervous because you seem to fail. Failure is often success with a capital S. Mm. We learn from our failures. So divine guidance. When we go to our guidance, it leads to opportunities. If we are looking for an opportunity to share our gifts, Take the pressure off yourself and give it away. Volunteer. There are wonderful opportunities for you to share your gift. If there's something you feel passionate about, you're not getting to do it right now, it just takes the pressure off because they can't fire you. You're a volunteer. I mean, they could fire you, but, you know, it's not about that. It's just giving, right? You find mentors. I had to have mentors to get through ministerial school and to remind me who I was when I forgot. My prayer partners, uh, people to support you, who see your potential, who see who you are. Getting an education, of course, in your gift, 
growing your knowledge of it. You know, ministry is a profession. Uh, lots of people think they can get up in front of people and speak, and they can. Everybody can speak, usually. And, um, and my, one of my professors in ministerial school said, the Holy Spirit is much more eloquent when you do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, you gotta know what you're talking about. So uh, I took that, that to heart. That was some good advice. First Corinthians 12, 31 says, strive for the greater gifts. So there are even more greater gifts that are seeking to express even through the gift, the first gift, and they grow. If you're still breathing, there are still more ways for you to share your gift. Be open to that. Be open to that. Spiritual gifts have an amazing way of facilitating our own spiritual growth when we key into that. Um, And the last thing I want to share with you is about a fork in the road. So, fork in the road. So you may be using your spiritual gift in, in a certain way. I was, now I went to school for performing. I went to college, grad school. I prof- was a professional performer for many years, regional theater, New York, different places. And when I was in my early 30s, I was called back for a Broadway show. And so that was the thing, right? That was the dream. That was my big dream. And I was excited. I did the call back and everything went well. And they said, you're on the list. And so... I hadn't seen the show. I'd heard the music. I hadn't seen the show. I go to see the show. I'm in standing room with my husband and see it, see the whole show. And my soul was like, I can't do that. I can't do eight shows a week. It's great. It would be the money would be great. But like to play the way that I saw the women depicted in that show. I'd been in unity for more than five years, and my soul just didn't want to show up that way anymore. I just didn't want to play the trampy, vampy, short skirt, you know, smoking, boozing. It was just not for me. I said, all right, what is this about? Because this would have been like a great credit, and um, would have been cool, uh, would have maybe led to other things, and, and just, there was just this clear, it was not in alignment with the values that I now held about myself, and the way that I wanted to see women depicted, the way that I wanted to express my gift, and I didn't know what, if it wasn't musical theater, I really didn't know, I was at a fork in the road, and I had to pray, and I prayed a lot, and just said, what is mine to do, that was my prayer, what is mine to do, what is mine to do, and That was when I did the thing where I gave it away, and I joined the choir at my church, my Unity Church. That was my first volunteering opportunity there, and it was a different orientation to sharing my gift because I was doing it in ministry. I was giving in service. It wasn't all about how cute I looked and, you know, the perfect this and that, that I was people were getting uplifted and healed and transformed through through this music. I was in amazement of it, and I thought, okay, this 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 is it. And then Spirit had, there was another way, okay, so there's that, and then I heard my call to ministry, and I didn't know how to do ministry, but I knew some things about performing, and and so I had to take classes. I started teaching classes then, and then I discovered I needed to learn really how to pray in front of people. I became a prayer child. That's a big deal. It's not, you know, because really, if you haven't been trained, you just go right to, um, you know, Almighty Father God, like the same thing that whatever you were raised with, prayer, and affirmative prayer is is different different type of prayer. So I had to learn that, and I grew. I was like, wow, I could do this. And so every step was adding to my toolbox. I could do this. I could do that. And it just continued to grow. 
And um, now I don't always feel 100% confident every day about all these things that I do. I have to pray. And I have to get my internal validation because I can get stuck in worrying about what you guys think about me. <laughs> and, um, and my spiritual director reminds me that that's, that's not putting God first. I've got to always put God first and, and be in service to the divine and, and trust that what I give is enough and uh, is sacred. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> and, um, I didn't come up with that. Emily Cady says, the time has probably come in your spiritual growth when you are no longer to cling to just one spiritual gift. There's so much more in us for us to discover. We're infinite. There's other ways for us to express. And so my task for you is to discover what new ways your gifts are wanting to express. Maybe it's a whole other gift that you thought, hey, I always wanted to try painting. I want to check that out. There's something about that that's calling me. I don't know. There's something out there in you. Really, it's in you listening in you, discovering that gift, a new way to express. And I know it takes courage to do that, to step in a new direction, a new path. A couple of people to give you some inspiration. It took courage for Galileo and Newton to discover the laws of the universe. Alexander Graham Bell, he actually wasn't looking to discover the telephone. His wife and his mom were deaf, and he was trying to help them to, um, to create research hearing devices, and he fell upon the telephone. And we're grateful for him for that, right? A couple of wonderful women to, to point out Grace Hopper, who invented the computer. Now, this was back in 1944 at Harvard. It was one of those room-size, five-ton computers. And one thing that's cool about her, too, is that the word debug, debugging, you know, is actually came from her trying to get the moths out of the computer, this big five-ton computer. That's where that came from. And of course, Marie Curie was the first person to win two Nobel Prizes, and she discovered the theory of radioactivity that you could split the atom. And so we don't know what we can discover when we open up to the fullness that we are. Are you ready to share your gifts in a new way? Yes. Okay. Let's affirm together, I am free to share my gifts and shine my light. I am free to share my gifts and shine my light. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you for watching this message today. I'd like to invite you to join us in person here on campus at Unity of Houston for Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services. If you can't be with us here on our campus, you can still join us live on Facebook or on our website, unityhouston.org, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central.